If today's Old Testament passage troubled you, if you found it hard reading, then I'm in the same boat as you are. I found it really disturbing, actually, just to sit here and read some of the things that uh, Isaiah talks about. Um, not least, obviously, the passage begins with the total devastation of the earth. And the way that it talks about it, it's really all complete. Every single person, priest and people, master and servant, mistress and servant, and so on, is going to be destroyed. And verse 3 sums it up. The earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered. And then what is even more disturbing is not simply that it talks about um, just total destruction, but then a little later it goes on and there are all these praises to God. And, you know, you think, oh, I'm getting to a nice bit in chapter 25. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness. You have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin. And it, it, it goes on then. And says, well, because of this, ruthless nations are going to honour you. You have you have shown that you are worthy of kind of being feared. Um, later on uh, in ch chapter 26, again, there's some nice uh, verses, some, some probably easier to understand verses about how you keep us in peace when we have minds that are fixed on you and we have minds that trust you. But also, even then, it, it goes on to say about how um, God destroys and, you know, when you show grace to the wicked... Uh, they don't learn from that grace. Uh, and it finally kind of finishes with, again, these very disturbing verses about how uh, the earth will disclose the blood shed on it. The earth will no longer conceal its slain. What do we make of all of this? How do we wrestle with it? First of all, it's it's good to be disturbed by the Bible. Um, if we're not being disturbed by the Bible regularly, it's probably a sign that we're just glossing over some of the more difficult passages and some of the bits where God will speak to us and challenge us. So that's the first thing to say. So the second thing to say is it's good to question God and, and to um, wrestle with some of this stuff directly. He's not afraid of our questions. All the way through the Psalms are people questioning him. Job is full of questions of God. Uh, it's good. He invites the questions. He's not afraid of them. So that's the second thing to say. Thirdly, how do we deal with the passage particularly? In, in a three-minute video, how can I, I? I don't even have total reconciliation myself. Um, but first of all, let's recognize this. God punishes evil. And the way that the Bible describes it now that we live in the New Testament times is ultimately this destruction is coming. Um, this final judgment, as it were, is coming when Jesus returns. But we worship a God who who hates evil. He hates injustice and he hates sin. He won't have anything to do with it. And when he comes across it, he he um, he destroys it. And that leads us on to the second thing of worship in the context of knowing that. Could, let me ask you a question. Could you worship a God who didn't do that? Could you worship a God who was indifferent to evil or who thought the evil things in the world, uh, the genocides, the rapes, the murders, uh, the bullying, the brutality with which we treat one another was no big deal? Could you worship a God like that? I don't think I could. And then the final thing is, even though we find sometimes it difficult with certain passages, the overall scope of the Bible shows us that God is love and that God is justice. And when I cling to both of those things, it helps me wrestle with some of these more difficult parts of the scriptures.